Put on your sunscreens and sunnies. We're heading for a Eurasian adventure in Tianjin, the Europe of China. Tianjin is located in the northeast of China. And in the 1860s, it served as a port city for foreigners arriving into China as well as a gateway into Beijing. During that time, many government officials from Europe visited the city, influencing its culture, architecture and food. Because Tianjin is located approximately 131 kilometers from Beijing, most locals travel here from Beijing as an escape from the bustling city. There are many ways to travel from Beijing to Tianjin, but the most popular options are by trains or airplanes. Because it's affordable and doesn't require the hassle of going through airport customs, we chose to travel by the high-speed rail, departing from Beijing South Station. Plus, the journey only takes half an hour. Immediately after stepping out of the train station, you'll be greeted by the riverbank as well as various Western architecture. Besides that, everything from street signs, cobblestone pavings, quiet alleys, statues and monuments will make you feel as though you're in Europe. And if you explore the city for quite a bit, you realize that the city operates at a slower pace compared to Beijing. So even though it's just a few kilometers away, it has a very different vibe to it. But of course, the people and the culture is still indefinitely Chinese. Anyway, let's go explore Tianjin. For this day trip, we will be visiting six iconic spots in Tianjin. Our first stop will be at the Porcelain House after which we will head for the Min Yuan Stadium and the St. Joseph Church. Next, we will explore the Italian town in Tianjin before visiting the ancient cultural street. Finally, we will stop by the Tianjin Ai before spending the remaining hours in Tianjin along the river promenade. Having studied in the force of architecture, I've always found the union between traditional and contemporary styles very interesting. When done well, it can be like the Starbucks in Kyoto where traditional Japanese townhouse meets the international coffee giant. Our first destination is a sexy looking building, exactly that. The Tianjin Porcelain House combines European elements with oriental ceramics. Colourful ceramic vases, bowls, plates and even cats are fossilised onto the building, as though time has been frozen for these objects. Um, yeah, including that car. But the admission fee cost about 10 bucks, and considering that it's quite a small building and it will be packed full of tourists, I'm not sure if I want to pay to squeeze. I believe if you want to visit a touristy spot, you should always put in the effort to wake up early. If not, you're going to get caught in a wave. Next, we head off to the Wu Da Dao district, which translates to the five great avenues. This area is known as the World Building Expedition, showcasing various architecture styles of English and European influence. But of all the buildings, you want to be at the Min Yuan Stadium. The north entrance is a monolithic archway that ushers you in. Inside, hallways with arches and the amphitheatre will surely remind you of the Colosseum, a great place for a family hangout. I've always wanted to visit the Colosseum in Italy, but seeing how travel is not possible now, I guess I'll settle for something similar. Under the stadium, there is also an atrium that houses several shops. And as you walk around the Wu Da Dao district, aside from buildings, you'll find statues at every corner. Definitely one for the social media if you ask me. Another spot that you should visit in Wu Da Dao is the St. Joseph Cathedral. Originally built in 1913, it was destroyed on several occasions but rebuilt in the 1980s. To this day, it remains as the largest Roman Catholic church in Tianjin. The interior is beautifully decorated with Western ornamentations such as stained glass, chandeliers, sculptures, columns and paintings. A scene familiar to Europe. For our last European setting, we made it to the Italian district. It offers many different areas connected with alleys that converge into the main central plaza. If you're looking for some Western food, this is the place for you. With a wide variety of bars and restaurants serving delicious food and drinks, you'll be spoiled for choice. But a heat of warning, as it is a touristy spot, 
The price can be, how should I say, quite arousing. The Italian town is sort of an artsy-fartsy area, filled with tiny corridors, sculptures, as well as interactive arts. After that, we stopped by Gu Wen Hua Jie, the ancient cultural street. As the name suggests, it's a completely different setting compared to the other areas that we had previously visited in Tianjin. Filled with rows of traditional shop houses, this place is packed with many street snacks and souvenirs. If the weather permits, you should definitely take a relaxing walk along the riverbank, which leads to the Tianjin Eye. Here, the water is so clean that you can see people swimming in the river. I know it seems weird to most foreigners, but I think it's just the way of life here. The riverbank area kind of reminds me of Singapore and Adelaide. Calm and peaceful. A great spot to relax and appreciate the unemployed life. If you come to Tianjin, there is also another Instagram-worthy spot you should visit. The Tianjin Binhai Library, designed by Dutch architects MDRDB. But from what I've heard, you aren't allowed to bring your camera in, only your phones. And since my phone sucks, I guess not. Plus, it's far from the city centre, so I'll give it a miss. Like many water cities around the world, there are bridges that span across the river, connecting the city and creating quite a view. But to me, the real magic of Tianjin happens at night. As dusk approaches, the entire city lights up. Buildings, bridges, river and promenade all come to life. Bridges offer the best vantage points of the city and riverscape. The promenade by the river also turns into a public performing space. And finally, we arrived at the large plaza at the south entrance of the train station, just beside the river promenade. And we bid farewell to the beautiful city of Tianjin. The bullet train ticket costs about $17 per person, so a round trip between the two cities is about $34. And because Tianjin is a tourist attraction city, there are many English signs everywhere, so getting around won't be a problem at all. In the next episode, we'll be exploring some of Tianjin's traditional street snacks and delicacies. In the meantime, we've made it back into the capital. Once again, thanks for watching this video. I hope that it has given you some ideas if you're planning to visit Tianjin. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and stay so thirsty.